Hello, welcome to another episode of Rahalastapa, Rahalastapa with Trevor and Simon. This is an introduction to the introduction. I'm just about to do another introduction, but I just want to say that we're doing a Kickstarter for my Ofragon 50 DVD, which we're recording on May the 4th at the Queen Elizabeth Hall. Go to richhane.com slash gigs if you want to get tickets for that. <clears throat> but if you want a, one of the very limited um, copies of the luxury DVD set we're producing, then go to gofasterstrike.com slash kickstarter and that will lead you to the kickstarter. There's loads of fantastic rewards uh, to be had there. And also it's International Women's Day tomorrow and I will be doing my usual shenanigans. Uh, this year we decided to raise some money for Refuge UK at the same time. So if you want to sponsor me in my endeavours to tell people when International Men's Day is, go to justgiving.com slash November 19th, 19th, and um, you will be able to donate some money to a fantastic cause and help me through a very difficult day. Here is the proper introduction. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to another Rich Chains Let's Square Theatre podcast. My guests this week are Trevor and Simon. Beat that is impossible to beat. Uh, I am currently on tour. Why do you not come and see me? Uh, tonight, if you're watching this when it goes out on the 7th of March, I'm in Harperton. On the 8th of March, I will be on Twitter telling you that November the 19th is International Men's Day. Uh, and on the uh, 9th of March, I am somewhere else. Where am I? Somewhere exciting. Swindon. Yeah. Nothing could be more exciting than that. There's loads more gigs coming up after that. Uh, check out richtang.com slash gigs or richtang.com slash ofrig slash tour and come and see me. And Or if you want to, why not head to gofaststripe.com Dot com and buy a copy of Emergency Questions or Christmas Emergency Questions. Why not get in early? Because Christmas is coming, my friends. It's surely as that train with Father Christmas on it and some Coca-Cola is coming. Christmas is coming, so make the most of it. All right, let's sit back and enjoy Rich Tay's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who thought he didn't need a belt today. And he was wrong, he does need a belt today. It's Richard Harry! <laughs> Thank you very much, hello! Uh, welcome uh, to uh, Rich Hayes Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Um, I was, um, <laughs> I was in uh, Castle Grayskull uh, the other day. I was talking to whatever he man's cat is called. What's that cat called? Too young, isn't he? Battle cat. That's when he's changed. Uh, <laughs> cringer. That's why I, I was thinking of swiping. Oh, swiping. That's what because I've got confused with Dora the Explorer. It's uh, the problem with me is my. My knowledge of children's television spans many decades, as we're about to find out today. Anyway, uh, Cringer. <laughs> and I've only got, I only came out of that because I have a routine about Skeletor coming up. Uh, <laughs> he calls it Rahalas uh, So, yeah, we've, uh, as we're recording this, uh, Valentine's Day has just gone by. Um, uh, which we mean St. Skeletor's Day has also gone by. That's why I thought I was thinking of Castle Grayskull. Uh, I, you may know if you follow my work that um, on my, the first Valentine's Day I shared with my wife 11 Valentine's Days ago, uh, I bought her a single Ferrero Rocher chocolate uh, so she could build a Ferrero Rocher pyramid. But then foolishly, I kind of doubled that year by year. Uh, so this year, uh, I, I was down to buy my wife 1,024 Ferrero Rocher chocolates. <laughs> but... My wife now hates Ferrero Rocher chocolates <laughs> as a direct result of what I've done. Does not, never wants to see another one again because A, I buy them for every Valentine's Day and also everyone thinks she really likes them so that she gets them as loads of presents. <laughs> she never really liked them. And then I managed to find a video online of, of like maggots hatching in some Ferrero Rochers. <laughs> and I've managed, sort of like a bit like uh, Clockwork Orange. Managed to put her off, so I'm, I'm, I'm off the hook, which is lucky. 
No, I never, I never predicted that. Uh, and uh, yeah, Saint, Skele Saint Skeletor's Day uh, is the day. And uh, this is quite interesting. Saint, I invented Saint Skeletor's Day. It's the day for the uh, the opposite of love. It's the it's for the destruction of love. The fifteenth of February, uh, and I invented that. But it's actually now on Twitter. You'll go on there, and people are talking about it, and they don't know who started it. So I think, I think it could be the comic creation that I've made that will last the longest. <laughs> that like in a hundred years time, people will have forgotten who Skeletor was and won't know that I originated the day, but will still be celebrating St. Skeletor's Day, which is very exciting. And if you are on Twitter um, and it's St. Skeletor's Day and you want to know the correct joke you should be making to me on that day, it is of course, when's International He-Man's Day? That is, so that is the... Um, <laughs> No one's got it, but that is the correct joke to do to me. You want to make the twist joke. Because that's, this uh, episode is going out first on the 7th of March, uh, which is the day before International Women's Day, where I have a very busy day. I've deliberately not put a gig in this year. <laughs> because uh, I have a lot of... I have to go on Twitter, if you don't know, and, and I search for men, usually, asking when's International Men's Day. I always have to search for when's International Man's Day and all the different apostrophes that you can possibly get within that. And National Men's Day, National Men's Day. It takes me all day and I respond to each of them, it's November the 19th, which it is. I think we may talk about this uh, a little bit more. So I I'm hoping to do it this year. And, uh, and if you enjoy me doing this on Twitter this year, will you, uh, we're going to set up a page uh, to where you can sponsor me for doing it this year. Uh, and, and all money will go to Refuge, which would be quite nice. Because, you know, it'd be nice to turn some idiot men's actions <laughs> into hard cold cash for a fantastic cause. Uh, so do look out for that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I promised that I would write uh, opening monologues, didn't I, last week, if you are here last week and the week before. Uh, and uh, I couldn't be bothered. So uh, I, tried, I tried to do it last week and then my, I had it on my phone and my phone, it crashed so I couldn't even read it out. It was a shame, it was a, I'd written a really good one. But uh, you know, New Year's resolutions you make in February don't always work out. So uh, let's crack on, Richard. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, was, I was going to talk about Andy from Andy's Dinosaur Adventures. Maybe I'll leave that till next week. Um, he's a cunt. So uh, that's, that's pretty much. That's pretty much. <laughs> Our guests uh, this week. I've got two guests this week, and they're probably best known from their sixty-second appearance on Comedy Rush at the Shaftesbury Theatre. That's why we're all here to see them <laughs> recreate those sixty seconds. Will you please welcome Trevor Simon, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Welcome. Sit down. Sit down. Thank you very much for coming. Oh. Welcome to the show. You're my, you're my favourite 90s double act. Uh, so, uh, Thank you. Who are still working together. So it's... Uh, <laughs> you know, when, when we were standing back there, Trev yeah. just said, you were doing your stuff, and Trev said to me, we're a bit like E-Man and Skeletor. And I, <laughs> in my only, head. The only, yeah, but the only reason to say that is if you think you're like E-Man. No one <laughs> yeah, says it, thinking they're like Skeletor. I don't, don't I think they? I'm like, I'd rather yeah. be Skeletor. He's more fun, isn't he? He is more fun. Yeah, but he's also a withered skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> well, I well. didn't like to say anything. It's like, a bit like two Skeletors is your double act. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, and that makes it even worse because no. He-Man was the funny one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Skeletor was funny. He was pretty good. He was pretty good. I'd, li I'd like to be Skeletor if I could lose the weight. So um, <laughs> maybe one day I'll be a skeleton. Let's all let's all hope for that. Do you remember your appearance on sixties on uh, Comedy Rush, which I think was yeah yeah. yeah, we what, yeah. what did you do in your sixty seconds that you had? We did. Uh, oh, the, now the thing is, we had something worked out that lasted sixty seconds, obviously, but. Yeah. Also, the microphones broke. Okay. So during our sixty seconds, it just didn't work because it, it relied on you saying, "I can't." I was no, dressed as magic, Moon Monkey. You did a magic trick. No, it was the, the egg magic trick. As Moon Monkey, I was. I remember. <laughs> I remember. Sorry, and anyone who Moon Monkey yeah. was like a creation of ours, and it was basically. Uh, <laughs> What's it? Into the moon it was me in a lycra one piece bodysuit that I used to have when was. when I was skeletal. Yeah. When I was really skinny on Saturday morning TV, and then w I wore it as a big fat man on this sixty seconds thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that at all, but, yeah. I, it's, but it's good that you mentioned you that probably, suit because we can all think of you in that suit yeah. again now. You probably blank that out by the sound. I've got it on underneath. But we <laughs> now you sit in the right order, don't you? That's what you were talking about because backstage, when we did our backstage interview, you sat the wrong way around. Yeah, no, we because are. Because yeah. you're so, I mean, even more than Ant and Deck, you're so much Trevor and Simon. <laughs> 
that if you weren't sitting in the right order, I might find it difficult to remember who was I, I, well, we I, would. The reason we sit in this order <laughs> is years and years back, we were on a, a TV show that Jonathan Ross hosted called It's Only TV, But I Like It. Right. It was a, a quiz show. And one of the team captains was Julian Clary. And the, who was the other team captain? I can't remember now. I don't remember. Jack, Jack D. D. Uh, and um, Julian Clary did this whole thing of going like, just dismissively going like, oh, I don't know which is which. <laughs> and it really annoyed me. Uh, <laughs> Not years. that he bears a grudge. Oh, I called a grudge. And yeah. No, but yeah, we've just always sat... I mean, Morgan and Wise did it. Abbott yeah. and Costello did it. Everyone did it. You did it. Yeah. We were, you know... Lee and well, Herring. you had. We didn't do it for, to be right in terms of the name, but we did have our. So it did turn out to be that. Yeah, way. it happened instinctively. Yeah, yeah. But we we, could... we sort of do it so we can remember who we are as yeah. well. <laughs> we did a show once, a Saturday show. It was a pilot. It never got to be a series, and it, it had Trevor and Simon at the back. Yeah. And some reviewer said that's because they can't fucking remember who they are. And things, <laughs> which was a it, nice that, that review. Was, it was. A, I'd like to hold a grudge. I can tell you who it was. <laughs> There was me trying to be discreet. Oh, no. There was Victor Lewis Smith. Uh, oh, yeah. So that... Well, you know. Uh, that and, and yeah, he job. said, yeah, yeah, a double, act, a double act too stupid to remember what they're called or something like that. He also used the line of, um, oh, a double act with two straight men, which <laughs> yeah. is... Well, he was a double act with just one person. He, tried to have, he had two names, didn't he? So he's, <laughs> a triple act. He, didn't, he wrote a bad review of us as well, so he obviously had it's, no taste. It, it was his thing. No yeah, taste. I quite liked, quite like his, uh, liked his little foray into TV. Yeah. What happened to him? Uh, I wonder what happened to him. He just sat and got bitter at home. Um, <laughs> which is fair enough. Um, what I, I've been watching you, you know, through from your garden. No, I've been watching you <laughs> on YouTube today a lot to remind me, because, you know, it's, I, it's weird. I shouldn't have been watching uh, you when in, you were on TV, because I was, like, 20... Oh, I thought you 25. meant today. You should no, have... I should, today I should be, because I mean, it's only polite. But uh, <laughs> when, when you were originally on, I did, you know, I did watch Going Live and Live and Kicking pretty much every week in my early 20s. That's a bit tragic, You crazy it? fool. Well, it was... Uh, it... It's not for me to say. <laughs> it was just, uh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we never, I think because it was on, on a Saturday anyway, it, we never kind of thought of it. It was just TV. I mean, yeah. I know it was kids' TV, but we never, other than there being the obvious parameters of what you can't do, you know, we kind of just tried to do what we thought was funny. Yeah. So I don't think it was trying to be, I mean, you know, you most probably, when you did Richard with Not Judy, you most probably found there were constraints put on you, even on a Sunday afternoon well, I didn't or whatever. know we were already on. <laughs> no one really noticed we were on so we did because it's actually 20 years almost someone did an article because it's 20 years since we started doing this morning with Judy and 19 years since we stopped doing it uh, and uh, and we actually looking back you know we did get away with a lot of filth yes I think we said I mean Kevin Nelson said twat one week but I think we didn't realise twat was that rude oh well, we never said twat uh, no. we didn't and we I didn't did go on TV about, drinking animals milk no from didn't their do that. teats or saying they're all howler monkeys by the time I'm finished with them <laughs> is, that, made, that was my so we didn't really pay much attention, which is probably why we didn't last as long as you did on the television. Yeah. But what I quite like about you, they're all very funny sketches, but you kind of are always just you with a wig on. It's, it's, <laughs> What's wrong they're with all, that? They're all different characters. There's nothing wrong with it. I love it. It's true. But it's true. There's like, what I like is there's not really even any attempt to differentiate any well, of the characters. Oh, oh, what are you going to say? We just use the same catchphrase over and over and over next. <laughs> Please. Oh, you know, we both, we thought we were actors, you know. Um, the no, thing but we, was, would, we, we would create a character through going, we go to the We BBC would create Waldo. a character? That's nah, shut up. <laughs> We, we'd, Honestly, go, we'd go to the BBC wardrobe, we'd root around, we'd find some costumes that made us laugh, we'd go to the wig department, we'd find some wigs that made us laugh, usually with David Jason's name stitched in the back. Yeah, yeah. And that was it. It's true. Oh, it was fantastic. In the old days, the BBC did have this place, it was like the, a whole floor of this tower block in Acton, and it was just packed with, yeah. with like, brilliant cardigans. And, uh, and <laughs> Oh, no, it was no, it's true. There's a cardigan. I've got a cardigan that I wore as the Singing Corner character, that someone on Twitter found a photo of the guy from, what's the name of the actor who plays the butler in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Joseph Marcel. Hmm? Yeah, so Joseph no, Marcel. They found a photo of him <laughs> wearing you, the Singing Corner cardigan <laughs> in an episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. It is good. I, we, yeah. we got the very, they sold that place off just after we'd done Fist yeah. of Fun, I think. Ridiculous. But I used to, the only wigs that would fit me belong to Alexi Sale because I've got a very big head <laughs> and so is he. <laughs> so those are, I, I would, I'd have been a bit flum, flummoxed if I'd have been doing the, exactly what you were doing. Um, but were you, I mean, I, I think with, it's interesting with this morning because um, I was thinking, I've been talking a little bit about it when I've been doing these uh, interviews about it, but I was very kind of influenced by Tiswas and the banana splits and things like that. Oh, yeah. did, did you grow up when you were your sort of same generation? Banana things, splits, you? definitely. I, yeah. As soon as we got the job on Saturday morning, I hoped we'd get a buggy to drive around in. <laughs> and in fact, a lot of the time we did try different things to kind of ride I around on. But I was going to say, no, you're right, because I don't think Tiswas particularly influenced us, but I think, because um, we were kind of... And this came, this sort of went with a kind of, we used to think we were alternative comedy, you know, yeah. and we were kind of anti gunge. Gunge seemed a bit, yeah. you know, rubbish. Um, but we, what we did do with the, there was two characters we did who were, it's wigs again. <laughs> we, had, we had these perfect blonde wigs. We were based on the kids from um, Village of the Down, you know, the film yeah, yeah. Village of the Down. We had these perfect blonde wigs, and we were in a submarine and the submarine door opens, and we're sat inside the submarine, and we go, want a nut? And then the other one goes, well, I go, want a nut? Yes, uh, yes, please. And then we open one of the, you know those, you know those tins of nuts where a snake jumps out? Yeah. <laughs> We'd open that, that would make us laugh, and then we'd go all somber, and then the door'd shut on us. <laughs> um, and we'd sit, we'd sit a bit like this though, didn't we? So it was, yeah, it was, we yeah, kind yeah, of did yeah, a bit yeah. of acting. Yeah, we did acting, yeah. we were acting. I can still remember that line. Yes, please. So that's act. That is acting. He's got no wig Where's on. Where's Trevor gone? Trev, oh, take, there take he your is. hat off. Take your hat oh, off. There he is. <laughs> no wig. See, that, this is why I wear hats now. I, this, that's why I wore wigs. Use your microphone. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I think it's the wigs that did this, you know. That's what we were told at the time. Oh, if you keep wearing wigs, you won't have any hair. So why has Richard got and, such a fine head of hair? Because I, I was wearing Alexi sales. So there's a bit of room to breathe in there. That's so, <laughs> so big. And now I'm told, well, don't wear a hat all the time because you'll never get any hair. But I'm never going to get any hair back, <laughs> am I? Although I do have an idea, actually. I'm thinking of going to, uh, to do a documentary yeah. about me going to Turkey to have a hair transplant. <laughs> because you can get it done over there now for 1,500 quid. Okay. Which is sort of more in the realms of, it's not kind of Wayne Rooney sort of territory anymore. No, it's okay. So yeah. I might do that, but it means I've got to cry and do all that, and I don't know whether <laughs> I can... Um, but I don't, know, do you think, I, don't, do you, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, really. Just buy a wig. Okay. I'll like, stick with the hats. But anyway, to finish this off, because it did have a Sorry. beginning, that was based on um, the Tarara Bumdi twins. Okay. So you know, in um, uh, what was we talking? Banana about? splits. Banana splits. <laughs> there we so are. Ma- the old age, terrible. Back in Banana the room. splits. <laughs> they'd open the door, and there'd be two uh, girls with banjos or something oh, singing yes, "Tara yeah. Rabumdie, Tara Rabumdie," yeah. and that was what we. That's why we, we wanted to do our version of that. There you go. But it's like the also... twins in The Shining. Yeah. Though the banana splits, I think they had a moment as well where everything used to go crazy as yeah, well. And, and we did a thing on, on going live, or live and kicking, I think it was, called Let's Go Bonkers. We, yeah. did, we did two versions of it, because one season... Season? <laughs> we, did, we, did hey, Let's yeah. go, we did Let's Go Bonkers, and we also did Let's Go Nuts. Yeah. Uh, that was, that's how varied we were. <laughs> we had to really fight to call this section Let's Go Nuts, because... Uh, because that, they were very strict on things, and, and it was um, yeah, and, and there were people who didn't like the the phrase nuts because it, it it sort of it, you know it was making fun of mental health issues. Oh, really? yeah, I, yeah. I thought because of the testicles. We're no, really, no I, well, now, nowadays because people have nut allergies yeah. and they don't want to offend them. So it's, you know, no, it's I know, <laughs> but I think we'd also done a thing called Every <laughs> we, Loony Wins as well. Which, Every uh, Loony Wins, and, and we also did and, another one called Looniversity Challenge. We yeah. did. And some people yeah. said, we, well, you know, we tried but, but to argue. We, we argued, oddly enough, successfully, <laughs> that because the goodies in their day had used the word loony, yeah. it was okay to still use the word loony. <laughs> like they're the judgment of it. They're the kind of... <laughs> they're well, the benchmark. The goodies it's okay it, by that. Tim Brooke Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> but Let's Go Bonkers was good, because you'd get a celebrity guest, and um, and uh, I think it was Let's Go, Let's Go Nuts. We had furry kind of animal print suits on, bowler hats, and we were sat on big plastic monkeys. <laughs> yeah. And... And it was, you make me I, want to see this. And, <laughs> and I have a feeling one of the guests we had, it, it was Gary Glitter. Yeah, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? And it was all, a particular... all the way we were talking about this, I was thinking, well, no one's going to mention he's not him. Gonna mention that. Do you think that's well, what caused him to, in order to happen? <laughs> he came on here, let's go nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Maybe I the, will go nuts. The only thing I would. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 
don't mention that. The only thing that the most surreal thing you can find on YouTube is a sketch that we do as a couple of the guys who own the record shop who had the original catchphrase of we don't do discs. Um, they, what were they, I can't even remember what they were called, the Roberts Brothers. <laughs> yes, that's Robert's anyway, Records, yes. But they did Robert's yeah. Records, they did a sketch, and you, this is on YouTube, where we're running the record shop, Pulp come in, Pulp, yeah. Pulp come in, <laughs> followed by Gary Glitter. Yeah. And the, the sketch ends with us and Pulp and Gary Glitter all dancing together. <laughs> so maybe it was Jarvis Cocker's fault, not ours. <laughs> but... That was, I remember that one of those let's go nuts or let's go bonkers very badly because uh, one, one night all the cast had to stay in a hotel in Shepherd's Bush because there'd been a snow warning and uh, the, uh, the, the boss was frightened that we wouldn't all, all get in okay. uh, the next day. So the whole cast uh, and, and tech team and everybody, the whole produ that production crew, that's how I forget television speak, <laughs> the, <laughs> all had to stay in a hotel in Shepherd's Bush and of course... That was a crazy thing to do, because everyone just stayed up drinking all <laughs> night, pretty much, having a right old time. And so the next day, I was feeling really a bit poorly, and I was sat on a plastic monkey in a furry suit. <laughs> and, and, of course, we were elevated then above these very small children who all sat around. And I, thought, and it was, I might be sick on one in a minute. <laughs> and it was the only time on Saturday morning where I thought that might happen, thanks, but it didn't, yeah, it didn't thankfully. But Say it, it a, did. It's funnier. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I vomited over a small yeah. child. Yeah. <laughs> And Gary Glitter laughed. <laughs> Don't do <it>. Just... <laughs> We should never... Oh, you shouldn't have... It's I... not our fault. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't invite him on. No, but it's funny it. I, I just about got away with bringing up my bitter Victor, Victor Lewis Smith story. <laughs> and, you, know, you, you didn't can... get away with it. He's in the audience. He's going to see you later. <laughs> <laughs> he won't watch podcasts. It'll be fun. Well, I think, it's the, I think that's, that's all... Uh... Well, so let's let's talk about how you got together because I I would it took me a little while to find out how you got together. There's, but then I found out that you were at <laughs> university. You, you no, right you're a really that. rubbish private I detective. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was. Then I found out you'd done how we met on the Independent. And then that didn't oh, all yeah. work. Oh yeah, uh, we did. Uh, yeah. But uh, that was posh. So you it? met at the University of Manchester. Yes. Which which just before you were there was... Well, but did Ben Elton teach you? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Ben Elton, he taught me. I don't think it, you were... Trevor was a year younger than he me. He didn't I teach was, him well, comedy. That's no. not... <laughs> he, no, he taught, taught me Greek tragedy. I know. Uh, but also, so our, when we were at university, our, um, our professor was uh, a guy called David Mayer. And David Mayer was the father of Lisa Mayer, yes. who is the co-writer of The Young Ones. Um, and at the time, she was going out with Rick Mayle. And Rick Mayle and Aid and Ben had all been students at Manchester University a couple of years before us. Um, basically, when we, I think when we were in our first year of university, our professor invited us to his house to meet Rick Mayle and Ben and yeah. Lisa. And we went around to meet them. But we were really incompetent and useless students and our professor, <laughs> for some bad. reason, didn't introduce us. We just came into the house, <laughs> and he was, and they were sat around this circular table. In the, it was like a kitchen diner thing. And it, he didn't say, oh, this is Trevor and Simon, or these are the two students, or anything like that. And he just went, oh, I'm going up, upstairs. And he cleared off. But before clearing off, he said to Trev, Trev, will you keep an eye on those steaks in the oven? And there was some, <laughs> there was I some was steaks. I was a student. I didn't know what a steak was. <laughs> oh, yeah, they'll do for about half an hour. steaks were under a grill or something. And then the next minute, they catch a fire. <laughs> <laughs> When I, I, the alarm went off. Yeah, and, smoke alarm. I mean, yeah, uh, and we were just kind of not knowing what to do, and none of them act, react, reacted. Nothing happened. Eventually Rather than David that thing of going, down. oh, what's happening? Oh, are you all right, lads? They just pretended we weren't there and, <laughs> and pretended the whole thing wasn't happening. <laughs> And then we, we used to do this kind of daft uh, show, every a live show, didn't we? The, and the next day they came to see us do this live show. Right. And they came and up to us after us and went, ah, that's why you were there. We didn't know. We didn't know who you were. Oh, you know. And, and then they were really nice, you know. <laughs> and Rick Mayall gave us this kind of, um, he said, oh, we were off up to Edinburgh. It was the first time in Edinburgh, was it? Most probably about yeah, 1984. Yeah, yeah. And he said, uh, oh, Here's a quote, you can use it on your posters. And he went, my favourite act. So on all of our posters, we had this quote saying, my favourite act, Rick Mayall. And then you go up to Edinburgh and you see, my favourite band, Rick Mayall. <laughs> 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 
But still, <laughs> it worked though. It did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ended up watching because I was going through lots of going live and live and kicking things, and I ended up watching them. Rick and uh, Aid were being interviewed by Sarah Green, and it was slightly an awkward interview. Have you not seen the interview we do? The yeah. oh, 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 the interview no. with us is far worse. Is don't, don't, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, there was, was there's, so, there's a lot of you did a lot of hours of television. The, and stupidly, they told us to interview Rick and Aid, and again, I think we were quite young, and we were a bit kind of like, you know, we like to think we were comedians, so we were kind of thinking, why are we interviewing them? And and they basically, there, there was a, yeah, there, that's a horrible interview. Okay, well, I've said don't watch it, you will now. I'm gonna, definitely you know. going to find it's, it's horrible. Yeah, you can sort of, yeah, it's, it's cringy awkward, but, yeah. you know. We thought it was funny because we were both out on tour at the same time. Right. I mean, we both had the same promoter and stuff. So we said, hey, yeah, well, we'll do this little idea. We'll have a chat in the coffee bar and then we'll, we'll say we're going to have a fight and we'll end up having a fight in the coffee bar. And of course, we, we try, naively, we tried to lead them into this thing and then they just completely backed off it. And just, right. <laughs> no, we, should, we, we should know this. I mean, we'd be the same. Don't, don't go with other comedians and say to them, hey, will you do this? And expect them to play along. They'll do their own thing. And, Whereas Sting, you know, he always played along. Yes. Yeah, but he's not a comedian. No, 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 I know. That's what I mean. Oh, it's okay with Sting, pop stars. Yeah. So you called him Stink. We did call him Stink. Yeah. <laughs> and we called oh. him Stink, but then uh, they got a bit of a laugh in the studio. And then one of his, the people who was with him, he had some people with him. <laughs> and, uh, and they said, it's funny you say that, because he does stink. <laughs> No, seriously. And he said he's on, the, he's on one of these he natural, didn't, he didn't uh, use natural any deodorant, deodorant things. He just didn't, yeah. He, the yeah. only deodorant yeah. he used was a rock. He had a rock he carried around with him. Yeah. And you know, he always wore those furry mohair yeah. jumpers. Cool. Yeah, you know. Well, but, he, was, he was sex lasted for like 13 hours. He wouldn't have had time would for stink. a shower. No, would no, he? you would, you, yeah. Take it from me, you stink at the end of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand but, so close to <laughs> <laughs> So how did so how did that go for you were doing like pantos and quite serious theatre in uh, Man you were both theatre Oh students. back in Manchester Yeah 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 uh, well, we, we were, uh, well we got into student kind of plays and yeah. we were cast together in a, in a Molière comedy that right. was artistic Yeah yeah, yeah. Nice. And, uh, um, and that was the first thing we did together. And it was like a two-hander sort of um, play thing. Yeah. And uh, it was a comedy. It was good. And we, yeah, we well, started... Actually, no, the very first thing, because that, that, that was the... Was it called something like the misanthrope or the... I can't think what it was called now. The... Anyway, uh, before yeah. that, we'd done another one called A Forced Marriage, which had more people in it. But oh, right, that, okay. in, in A Forced Marriage... Trev, we were both in that, and that was the first time we met. And I'd been running to rehearsals, and I'd slipped and fallen into these bollards, concrete bollards, and broke my ribs. Right. And this, again, first thing we were in, and Trev just found it hilarious to try and make me laugh all the time during, the, <laughs> during rehearsals, just because I was in, it, I'd been such yeah, pain from laughing. But we had a lot of fun, because we, although it was like... A, you had a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, I know. <laughs> yeah, well, you did enjoy it, though, didn't you? <laughs> What's that? What does that even suggest? I don't know. We, you were laughing. We had a good laugh, yeah. and we kind of tried to spice up the kind of you know classical comedy by yeah. by putting props and silly props in. So I had some gloves on and did one of those kind of restoration kind of things. But I'd like snipped all the fingers on the gloves. <laughs> so when I went like that, all the fingers flew off, and that, that, that it probably wasn't in the spirit of how it was written. But it was good. It was, it was good fun. <laughs> and then we kind of just enjoyed that. And there was some, and there was the whole alternative comedy thing was. was going and like because you know Rick and Aid and Ben had all been there before us it, it kind of kind of thought well oh, this is it all felt kind of very possible yeah. I don't know that we could even the, ask we remember out, I mean the, the, this is a shocking sign of how things change though that we couldn't even watch the younger ones we had nothing to watch the younger ones on we had no TV right. and our again our professor David Mayer he would record them in the departments in the drama departments of the university and we'd go and watch them on video there wouldn't we and it yeah, was, yeah. Uh, yeah it was Amazing yeah. stuff. <laughs> Things <laughs> we watched on video at university. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember watching videos? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, that was, you couldn't, I, I used to tape, like, comedy off the TV on an audio player, because, like, the early, uh, I think probably the young ones just about had a video by then, mm. but before that you would just kick up the 80s, I was recording... Rick, oh, Rick Mayall's yeah, bit yeah, off yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, Recording yeah. the... With, oh, on audio, just with a cassette? On audio, so I could listen back to it the next day. Like, you, so you did John Peel and kick up the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. There we go, happy day. So what... what, what <laughs> um, not the same now, is it? Is this uh, internet rubbish? Just find everything you want straight away. Um, 
So how, so how did that? How did you get from that? You were doing the circuit. Were you oh, I see. In the yeah, 80s? no, because then, well, yeah, then we, we, well, there was a whole bunch of us who who sort of went out and started doing like student gigs for students, and yeah. and and we did a whole combination of things. We were a triple act at one point, uh, and there was a, there was a thing called uh, the Oi Boys, which was a satirical skinhead cabaret. Right. And uh, you should bring that back. I Take could your hat now. Off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> So that was that was quite good fun doing that, and uh, uh, and you you did some solo boys. stuff. Did yeah, well, did I? Yeah, you did uh, ventriloquism with a sock. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Simon would walk on stage, and he, and well, actually, no, I no, I remember how it went. Now I'd leave you on stage. Trevor, Trevor, you humiliate me. Leave yeah. me on stage. Go off, and I'd stand there for as long as I could with nothing happening. Yeah. And it was one of those nice things, you know, where you could just leave it as long as you possibly can. And then slowly I'd take off my shoe and I'd take off my sock. I'd put the sock on my hand and form it into a mouth like a glove puppet. And then doing one of my many actly voices <laughs> without a wig. Without a wig? I would put on my ventriloquist voice, which was something like, hello, how are you? Something like that. But basically the puppet wouldn't speak back to me. And it would go on for a long time. <laughs> of it refusing to speak back to me, and then eventually it would attack me. <laughs> sort of a, yeah. <laughs> hey, to which we'd it end was alternative it. So, comedy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Simon would end up then rolling around on the floor being attacked by his own sock. Yeah. Oh, no, I've just remembered, though, I had a kind of second thing of it. So Trevor gave me another go of doing ventriloquism, and I had a little plastic tiger that had a squeak in it. Oh, yeah. And I would do it with a squeaky... We had this theory, not theory, we had this policy... So when we were working on uh, live stuff, any prop that we used had to be an acquired thing. It had to be a bought thing. Right. You couldn't make a prop. Okay. Your stuff had to come from shops. Mainly um, Ubi Doo, which was the, 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 the forerunner of the pound shop in Manchester. But yes. there it was 50p then. Everything was 50p. And there were signs up all around the shop. Don't ask the price. Everything's 50p. So we'd <laughs> go, pick, go straight up to the counters. How much is this? <laughs> But, but, but it, was, it was a real kind of thing. We had a real policy of we, things yeah. had to exist. You had to get the comedy from things that existed. Okay. If you made a prop for something, that was kind of like failure. That was defeat. And it was tricky for us because <laughs> when we did start working on TV, you've got people whose jobs depend on making <laughs> things for you. You know, They want to make things for you. And so we kind of did eventually relent. We did have things made. But yeah, we'd want to find our own stuff and find what was funny and things that existed. Yeah. You did quite an adult act on the circuit then. In the, in we the did, film. yeah, because eventually that then, yeah, that developed into an act that we that we did on, on the pub circuit for a couple of years. Um, so, yeah, we did all the, the what was the alternative yeah. comedy circuit. So sometimes it was like a, a little room above a pub or a vegetarian restaurant or something like that. No, it was genuinely. And, the um, thingy, what was, yeah, the, um, what was the place in, you, you must know. The Earth Exchange. The Earth was Exchange, it? yeah. Anyone which was a tiny room, which was a vegetarian restaurant, and after the people had had their vegetarian meal, then there would be comedy. Yeah. Which, <laughs> and so we, and it was very intense, because it was very, you know, very sort of small room. Uh, but Just we what did, you want for comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we carried <laughs> on this thing. We were quite fascinated by the double act thing of, um, like, a bit like Abbott and Costello. They were kind of quite mean to each other. Yeah. And so we, I did, our double act involved me being pretty nasty to Simon. Yeah. And, and, putting him in some awkward situations. So uh, having done the sock thing, that uh, um, another prop we bought was a, was a fake egg, a magic egg, um, which you could put, put into your mouth and then produce a lovely silk handkerchief, okay. from, which, which I would do, which is obviously a shit trick, but I would do that. And then uh, Simon said, oh, I want to do it. So I'd, so I'd give him a, a, a real egg. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd... Ha he'd bite into the you'd egg. Have and, to, you'd uh, have to break it enough that the yolk kind of flew out nicely so people knew it was a real egg, you know, and then the yolk would come out and then he would make me eat all the egg, including the shell and everything. Wow. So you'd hear the shell crunching up. And That's this terrible. Was, this was just, this was when, what's her name, had declared a salmonella. <laughs> yes. you know, no, it, it, it was, it was like, I it wasn't, died. it wasn't Every Russian roulette. Every night I could have died. It was Russian omelette. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> that was, <laughs> That joke's 30 years old tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they come birthday. round again, that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone who first heard that is dead now. <laughs> but then, I mean, the other thing, we used to reenact films as well. And um, 
Well, in fact, news events as well, and anything that invent that meant Simon would punch himself in the head. And, and um, I ended up uh, when we were yeah, he was so Trevor list. He, I, he'd get me to do Rocky, and that was it. Punch, and then it'd be Rocky two, Rocky three, Rocky four. <laughs> and, and but we did this in Edinburgh, the Edinburgh Festival, when I had to go to uh, the hospital and with, with an injured neck, and I had to wear a big neck brace thing and take it off for the show to do all that again and fall over. And I promise you, I didn't make him do that. <laughs> he volunteered. Do that. See, I would have said it. I would have guessed he was the high status character. You're going to play that out of the two of you. I'd have thought you would be the one who'd be bullied, and you'd be the bully. No, he's high status. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a theory I, about. In I, fact, I, I have this theory about. I'm he man. <laughs> You're he man. <laughs> yeah. yeah like it's kind of like the, if 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 one of them is kind of a high status in the double act. They're, they're the reverse of that in life. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So Trev is kind of he bullies me on stage. But in reality, I kind of bully him, yeah. and I'm I'm the mean one. I'm the, uh, yeah. Stuart was in both. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you see, no, 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 no. I've so I years ago when we met you on Roland Riveron's radio show. <laughs> Don't you that remember? Was, that was where that was where we met when Roland Riveron sent us off to the opera. Oh, it was a fantastic the opera. Job And he that said was. Roland Riveron said to us, "Would you go and do um, some? Would you go and see the opera and review it for us?" And we said, "Yeah." And he goes, "Okay, Gypsy's handshake." And we didn't know what he meant. And he spat in his hand and then made us shake his hand. <laughs> and what that meant bastard. that we had to do it. Yeah. So from then on, but it wasn't a bad job actually because we went to the opera. That was perhaps yeah. the most challenging one, but because we were a bit late, but we got there and we enjoyed it. It was all good fun. <laughs> but then he sent, he said, "Oh, there's a new fancy fish restaurant opened up in the centre of London. <laughs> Go and review that." So and he said, "Take, take, you know, take your wives, girlfriends." Or whatever. I said, oh, okay, thanks. So but we yeah. met you and Stuart on that show. Did you? I don't so remember. And, and you very kindly gave me the fist of fun book, and I said, "Would you both sign it?" And you both signed it, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, I think Stuart put something like, you know, Simon, best wishes, you know, something nice. Yeah. And you put, to Simon, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I was being bullied by Stu, so I had to bully whoever else. In fact, I wanted to ask you, did you, is, is you're an idiot something you wrote to everyone? <laughs> or did you? <laughs> you know, is, is it like that a been, Is that been eating away at you? Oh, yeah. God. I've never, <laughs> honestly, yeah. Have you only come on the podcast so you can bring this... <laughs> I don't even remember meeting you it's before. It's so. <laughs> <laughs> It was a crazy time back in the 90s. Um, I, I usually would say something rude, yeah. But like with me, people ask me to write rude things. In I never asked you no. to write something <laughs> rude. Do you I know, just thought you were the kind of person. Hey, where's, we, the we really, no, where's the we, harm in a nice, yeah. and sincere yeah. best wishes? Just a best wishes. Yeah. That's all I want. She was thinking it when he wrote the nice thing. I <laughs> just, I just <laughs> said what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, oh, it, you know, we said hi, Richard. I should really like this program. Yeah, could, do you do? It, I know. Do you well, do how come he's not an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> He didn't see what he wrote. He didn't have a. He hadn't bought a book. I'm sorry. I don't think you are an idiot. Well, well, and let, we'll we'll talk about this then to prove you're not idiots. We'll talk about pointless celebrities. Oh. Which is why you're here. This is why you're here, I believe, because I believe on the Richard Osman podcast, we can't remember who it was a choice between, but I asked the audience to vote on whether they wanted to see you. Well, I heard it that you said, who do you want on? Joey from Friends or Trevor Simon? (laughs) (laughs) And here we are. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. (laughs) (laughs) How are you doing? No, how are you doing? (laughs) How no are you wig, doing? no wig. How you did you that without a wig. You did that without a wig. I did. That was acting. Yeah. I didn't tell you. How are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? I don't know. How did you say it? No, he just well, drives cars now. Anyway, doesn't when you take it? when you take your hat off and do it again. <laughs> Who loves you, baby? <laughs> it's just it's what? a bit more like Matt Lucas doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't do him. <laughs> like I could do the others. <laughs> So you've, you've, have you done Pointless Celebrities twice? Uh, three times. Twi- three no, we're times. the only people in the whole world ever who've done the show three times. I've done it three times. No, you haven't. You're, you're not. I have. You've Get not. out of here. <laughs> you can't. How? Because I, I keep losing, but you keep winning. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then he's... That Richard, Oz, he lied to us. Did he? Well, um, you might be the first to do it three times. Who did you do it oh, with? Okay. I did it with um, Rona Cameron, who... No, well, we don't want to go over it all again, but she <laughs> said... <laughs> When she was asked for somebody who'd had a number one hit, in the, a solo artist had a number one hit in the 1980s, she said, to pow. 
That is not a solo no. artist. That is a band. Yes. Oh. That's Dom Jolly. <laughs> I even know. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, so that we lost that one because then I had to try and be clever and I wasn't okay. clever. Then uh, Robert Webb, who had to name a uh, country ending in a vowel, I think. And I got a pointless answer and he screwed up. Right. What did you go for? I went for Tivaloo or whatever it is. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, then I was on My Beautiful Wife, Catherine Herring, Katie Wilkins. Uh, and she was competent. We got to the head-to-head and lost. Oh, right. So you've, you've won. Have you won three well, times? So, to, to be, be fair, fair, to be fair, to be when fair, we got to the head-to-head... To, to be fair... Yeah. When we got to the head-to-head <laughs> the second time, it was against Ulrika Johnson. And... <laughs> uh, no, I know that sounds rude, but I, well, it is rude, isn't it? I'm being rude. <laughs> yeah, but I think Sorry, even she'd Ulrika. agree with you that night, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, to, to be fair, for me to be fair, I, it was Simon who won it, really, because okay. he's just got this amazing film knowledge. And when it came to the head-to-head, each, well, the first time I, I messed up, although I don't think that's why we went out, but the first time we were on... I just did something daft, but uh, not as daft as thinking to power is one person. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't that daft. I couldn't think of an obscure, uh, an obscure um, berry, so I ended up saying <laughs> juniper berry, thinking that yeah. was one word, and uh, oh, I okay. realised my mistake. Yeah. I did know it was not one word. I hadn't worked. It. I hadn't thought it through. To no, be it's difficult in the heat of the lights. It's difficult. But I did to... learn from that that there is a there is an obscure berry called a a, a service berry or something, okay. and a winter berry. I mean, well, but make sure it's right because if I go on again and say no, service don't, don't, berry, no. <laughs> avoid berries. Right? But anyway, the next time we did well, and I felt you know, I, 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 you know, the show scares me to death. Chris' yeah. show scared me to death. But I've cried on it twice. Uh, <laughs> I generally have. Oh, oh, really? On the show? I'm like when I've been talking. I'm going, my voice. I've done that. Thing, I'm going, yeah. When I knew I was going to go out the first time, I was going, yeah, I was trying to talk about what happened. <laughs> oh, you see, again, I, I, I only cried in the dressing room. I didn't know yeah. you actually <laughs> cried. <laughs> at... cry. Wow, brilliant. One of, well, I'm going to say something, <laughs> I'm going to say something indiscreet, but not too indiscreet, okay. so okay. don't worry. But like, when we were on it on one of the occasions, and so there's three occasions to pick from here, but when we were on it on one of the occasions, <laughs> one of the other contestants went to the producers and went, ooh, Trev and Simon are cheating. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, and he said, I saw, I saw... The... He, you've given it away! You've, you've narrowed it down already! He or she, I saw them um, <laughs> whispering, he said, yeah. she said. Um, yeah, I saw them whispering. They saw us whispering. We um, didn't, that's not, I'll just say that now. Just for the record, yeah. we did cheat. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We really didn't, honestly. <laughs> you'd have to be clever. To, you'd have to be clever to cheat. We didn't even know which yeah, position to we're stand clever. in. <laughs> we, he, Richard Osman told us off. You don't have to be that clever. When my my wife, when it was coming back down the first one, I thought we were going to get knocked out. My wife said, "Oh, I know, I know this one." I know that. And I went, "Shut up, shut up." I don't want to. You know, I didn't want her to cheat. I wanted to be able to do it. Yeah. But she could have just said, "I know it. It is this." Like, okay. Oh yeah, I know. I knew that as well. Yeah, we did that. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. It's easy, just easy. To cheat. <laughs> Imagine winning and, and having cheated, and how that that pointless trophy must <laughs> feel heavy in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so you invented Don Draper. Yeah, yeah. from Mad yeah. Men. That was your invention. Yeah, yeah. I, I played. Was it me? You were Don Draper. I was Don, Don Draper. Don, Don and Dougie Draper. Don and Dougie Draper, the dry cleaners. Yeah. They, yeah, who? Why did we do that for a kids TV program? Who, you know, <laughs> why were they? Why would they? Kids uh, love dry cleaning. <laughs> they do. And Don and Dougie had a big um, dry cleaning machine that they called Queenie, and um, and all the uh, all everything would, would go in. And Queenie was always breaking down. And they had a dream that they were going to go and live in New Zealand. And it, there was a whole backstory to those. But the, I mean, it's basically the plot of Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. It was Don and Dougie Drake, but and they didn't do duvets. That was then they just said that yeah. basically. Yeah, uh, it was good. A lot, and um, and they wore wigs, and they were us. <laughs> yeah, and they were both the same character. They're all the, no, they're all they're all, all the that's same. Too far. It's all, that's you could too just far. do. You could just have one of you. If I've been, if I, what do you mean you could just have if one I've of been you? The, if I've been the BBC, I'd have just said, let's get rid of one of them. So and they, they, well, they just, they just but they tried, but I said, no, don't, don't let him go. <laughs> I, uh, 
He's a mate. I don't want him. I don't. And they kept on. No, I said, no, no. There was one, one... And they said, look, just give him 30% of the money. Then. You take 70, Trevor. I said, yeah. And that's how I explained it to you, wasn't it, Simon? <laughs> there was one season. I think it was season... I love this season, Dave. I think it was... Um, I think it was season five. They suggested stitching us together. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> It's not true. Yeah. <laughs> they wanted to stitch us together to make a weird duvet, and we said, well, we don't do duvets. And that was... Um, that's why I got it in there, just yeah. the ones. I love all of this for anyone out there who hasn't got a clue, and they're thinking, like, what are they on about? What are they talking about? When's Jess Phillips yeah, on? Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I like, but that's what I think is great about show business. Show business is, a, a, like, a ridiculous con in a lot of ways, right? And it's crazy, and fame is crazy. When I was doing, when I did, I wrote a show called Talking Cock that got translated into lots of languages. <laughs> and then I would go to the premieres in other countries. And, when, and like, if you go to Norway, and then all these celebrities are coming in, and you go, but that's just a bloke. That's, that guy's just a bloke. And everyone's going, oh, no. It was like an old man who was wearing espadrilles. And he was sitting in a bar with like a beautiful young woman. And what the fuck's going on? Oh, he's a big star it's just like bullshit the whole thing's <laughs> everything's bullshit <laughs> and you become famous and you can say swing your pants and people are happy you know moon on a stick so uh, you want the moon on a stick <laughs> right on a stick. i'm getting a pair of what happened in what happened in uh, 91 92 why did you not do the 91 oh. 92 uh, season oh um, so I can't, do you know, I can't remember why. Yeah, oh, you <laughs> can remember why. <laughs> Basically, yeah, we did. So we did. A, we, we decided to just we did leave, an offshoot though, did... in the in the break. We did an offshoot program called Hundred Percent that yeah. went out on BBC Two, and it was kind of a youth program as they were doing then. And we did comedy inserts into it, and it was really good fun. And we did a full series of that. That was a series then, not a season. And we did a full <laughs> series of that, and then we got when it came round to doing the second series of it we had to make a decision as to whether we could do both. And we decided to do 100% instead. And we were writing it all over the summer. And basically, um, we, what happened, it's really weird. The BBC made an accounting error and they lost 20 million quid. And I don't know how that happened. And this was <laughs> that year. Yeah. And at the end of, even though we'd spent all summer writing it, they said, we're cancelling loads of programmes because we're 20 million short. And it got cancelled. Right. And so we had nothing to do. And they said, well, do you want to go back to Saturday morning? So we'd missed out a year right. doing that other programme. Do you, do you remember what the, the guys who took over from you were in that year? There were, there were Nick and James. Yeah, very good. Do you know what they're doing now? Nick's still an actor. I'm, I'm a friend with them on uh, Facebook. Oh, okay. uh, James is a head, head teacher who's also a pastor. Oh, yeah, excellent. I wonder okay. if his pupils know about him being on uh, Live and Kicking. I thought I thought it was a bit. I thought it was a bit weird that the program decided to kind of just try and replace us with us. You know, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I can't. No, they well, didn't I try and replace we, us with <laughs> us. <laughs> They're no, but we'd sort of said to them, if we're not going to be there, you want to have something different. Because it was, it was, I thought it was a raw deal on them. I think know. it was a tough break for them, as yeah. it turned out. Yeah, it was very difficult. Well, because it, you were so popular as well. So it was, it was, yeah, you're right. They should have gone for something completely different. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> Men in Trousers, I think they were called, weren't they? No, that was... That was, that they was came when, on later on. That was, that was later. when we left. That was... When we definitely were, left. Okay. When we left, <laughs> left, they came on, and they were <laughs> half of... The cheese shop? Oh, yes, okay, that's right, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. No. So there were three. So yeah. the BBC, having learned that lesson, lesson of not getting just two white guys again, <laughs> went for three white three guys. Three white guys, that would. <laughs> yeah, good. <sighs> Shall I ask you an emergency question? Oh. Oh. It, did, it worked well backstage. I asked, I did it on the random app, and asked, uh, do you know the way to San Jose? And it turns out uh, Simon's sister lives in San Jose, so he does. So... Uh, <laughs> It's just, it's just like on pointless well. as well. He always has the right answer. <laughs> <at the end. laughs> that was... Uh, OK. Who do you consider the best of Jesus' disciples? Question 254. <laughs> Is there a criteria? What defines best? Well, it's for you. you. For you to decide that. Right. Not, I, get, I ask the questions. That's a difficult one. It's not one. like Richard Osman. You can't go Richard Osman on pointless. Go, <laughs> how do you define what is pointless I don't know answer? that I well, can Paul, Paul must have been... He was quite a clever guy. He wrote Paul, letters, didn't he? Well, he's not really an official disciple, so, you know. Is he not? No. I'm going to go for Jeff. Jeff's a good one. <laughs> I liked Thaddeus best, because, you know, you don't hear much about him. He just kept himself to himself. <laughs> Thaddeus? Thaddeus. 
Wow. He's one of the 12. He was one of Smith and Jones, I, wasn't he? I, I don't know their names. Was, no. was that was that horrible one, one of them? Who's the guy yeah, who... Judas. Yeah, Judas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I've got to go with him. You're going to like him. i go with him. Well, but it's interesting, isn't it? Because if Judas hadn't betrayed Jesus, then Jesus wouldn't have been crucified. Yeah. Someone had to do it. We? He saved, he saved yeah. he's, Judas, because of Judas... We all live for eternity yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. More than for Jesus, if we're honest. Yeah. Jesus had just died in old age. Yeah. Gavin his feet washed by Mary Magdalene's hair, you know. Wouldn't have heard of him. So he was just be. doing what he had to do, really. Yeah. And what That's about Thomas? Doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas, yeah. I doubt well, he's Doubting Thomas, I find it I find Doubting Thomas interesting because he witnessed presumably all of Jesus' miracles, but then when and he saw Jesus for example raise Lazarus from the dead. Uh, and then when Jesus came back, he went, nah. <laughs> but, mate, do you remember when I walked on water? Yeah, but come on. <laughs> so, really, yeah. Doubting Thomas should just be called Thomas. He should be. He yeah. should be Stupid Thomas. <laughs> or for, Forgetful Thomas. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember when I walked on water? No. I, I wouldn't really watch. Do you remember when I had those two fish and I fed, like, a billion people? No, I'm not ringing any bells, mate. <laughs> <laughs> when you said, I was the son of God? No. No. But wasn't he a doubter just in the way that he'd have doubted, say, David Copperfield can fly? That kind of doubt. <laughs> it's just like, oh, no, Jesus, stop doing these tricks. They're, we know they're all tricks. Stop it now. That's... <laughs> Could Sorry. be. Very blasphemous, that, I'm afraid. Uh, so, um... <laughs> Very blasphemous. <laughs> I'll do one more, and then I'm going to ask you about Bross. Bross? So, yeah, we're right. Oh. Don't ask us about I, I, went, I, went, I went to school with Bross. Um... <laughs> have you ever fallen victim to a con man? That's a good question. I, I have. That's why I came over. <coughs> have you ever um, been conned out of anything? Well, I don't know. Only when I've been on holiday and I've got tempted to play that game where they, they're hiding a, a nut under some shells. Yeah. And I've, and I've got... Oh, it's definitely there. <laughs> yeah. And because it's not your own money, you think, oh, that's fine. Well, it is my own money. I mean, but it's like not money you recognise. So you're kind of... <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're freer with it, aren't you? So you go... Yeah. Yeah. And you're on holiday. And you, There's going to be and, some left yeah. at the end anyway, so you might And you're well totally drunk around. anyway, so, you know, and you do it. So, yeah, that's it. It's under there. And, it, and it, yeah, he so, called me because it wasn't. And I don't know where yeah. it was. But. So very much yes is the answer yeah, to the question. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, you can't Connor Connor. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, apart from the time when a guy at a bus station asked me for his train fare and I gave him it and he said write down your address and I'll send it back to you and he yeah. never did uh, apart from that time I was yeah. conned he might have died on the bus journey. exactly yeah, yeah. Like, oh, please give this do you know Trevor and Simon no <laughs> yeah, the guys from Life Cooking no, not, not James and Nicholas <laughs> don't send it to them. not the men in trousers send it back to him so Bross didn't really join in with your funny because you, you met like some amazing celebrities through your through this fantastic. like Bross <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, that's what I mean. But you made, you made Paul Simon played Paul, along. Paul Simon, yeah, who, who sadly had, had diarrhea the night he came on the show. <laughs> but so again, all the managers are really indiscreet with us. You know, like like with Sting in his stink business. They, you know, they the, love telling us these. Paul things, Simon's yeah. manager came and she said, "Yeah, he's not feeling too good. He was been up all night with diarrhea." <laughs> Just at the point. He was surrounded by like hundreds of kids with balloons, and, it, oh, it, it, and it was his birthday. It was his birthday. So they yeah. brought in because he's American. They brought in a cake decorated with the stars and stripes. Because and said, happy birthday, look! Hey. And kids hit him on the head yeah. with balloons, and uh, and we wondered why he didn't look so happy. But you know, uh, <laughs> that was why. Yeah. But yeah, Paul Simon, and um, you're, you're you're listing the people we have done sketches with. Richard wants to know about the ones who. Well, I'd like to know about. Yeah. I'd like to know all the gossip about them. Who was nice and who wasn't nice. So then. Oh, a quick and nice one though Mel Brooks we did a sketch with Mel oh, Brooks good. and Mel Brooks at the end of it said congratulations boys that was almost a sketch which I, <laughs> I'll take I'll take yeah. <laughs> <That's>, uh... <laughs> yeah. but Bross were yeah they were well they were the big thing of the time you know they were super cool and the girls all loved them and they didn't really want to look stupid are yeah. they? and so they didn't want to they and just they said no they ne we asked you know everybody do you want to do something you know we didn't make people do it did you fancy doing this and and uh, and they go yeah yeah and, and so, but they just always said no and the really yeah. annoying thing is we'd written a really complicated sketch for them to do with I can't <laughs> remember now but it was all about them having a paint shop where they sold <laughs> Matt who <laughs> paint <laughs> Matt <laughs> Matt Goss Gloss. <laughs> Luke 
Goss, Matt, I can't remember, yeah. but it was just all these different variations of paint they did. And, you know, they should have done that sketch with us. Yeah, Thank God we didn't do it, because we know... <laughs> We had, we had the trouble enough remembering the lines. Is it well, yeah, trying to remember all that? Oh. I was just, I went to school with uh, Bross. So they, they came to, in, for one He's, year, they lived in Cheddar. And they Cheddar? Were yeah. I, I thought they were Cheddar. from Peckham. They are, but they lived, their mum lived in, their mum, I think, and dad broke up and then they came you to know live in Cheddar. You know a lot about them, but, is right? this, well, school, and also, yeah. but is this true? Or is this, is I this mean, true? No, but you're they, in a double act where we know, we know your other double act half <laughs> has made a living out of claiming he was a school with Richard Hammond. He wasn't, so you know. <laughs> he lies about everything and I tell the truth. It's okay. in, every, in every double act. <laughs> Uh, my friend always tells the truth. I always lie. Uh, he, uh, but no, they've, they've got, but they both got off with Bridget Seely, who I fancied. Both of them, in, not at the same time. Oh, oh. No, it wasn't that perverse. It was Cheddar. <laughs> it like that. Uh, and they had, they had a fight with my friend Chris Scard. They were a couple well, of years younger them. than me, yeah. They, they, were they, really... they both, they, you know, they ganged up. That's... Oh. They were always you know, the They look like the one pigeons. bloke just moving around really quickly, don't they? That's the thing. <laughs> when you're twins. <laughs> <laughs> the Proclaimers, they were good, though. Were they, See, good? They, 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 nice? were, they were good They twins. were the good twins. Yeah, they were the good twins. So they, one, one twins got both the evil twins and one twins got both the good twins. Yeah, yeah. I guess. That's really complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and was Kylie Minogue nice? Did you, did you yeah, yeah, she was brilliant. Oh, what? Yeah. No, I'm just, yeah. I'm oh, just I thought right. you said yeah. no. No, she, was... no, she wasn't. No, she was. The thing is with Kylie, you know, when she first came on the programme, uh, they were, you know, she wasn't a big superstar. She was... She was obviously, you know, a pop star, but not mega star. And so the first time she was on the program, we felt we were able to say, would you mind um, being in a cardboard box full of straw? Because we'd like the idea that you've been in hibernation over the, <laughs> over the winter. And, um, and we want to reveal you yeah. as being, uh, having hibernated. And so like the blue Peter tortoise, we need to reveal you. <laughs> from a cardboard box full of straw. Would you mind doing that? And, and she said, yes. Which, and, uh, um, the interesting thing is, though, she did that, and then when she came on a bit later on and she was more famous, and we said, we're going to do Polly Put the Kettle On, and we've got a kettle to put on your head. Yeah. And we had this kettle that kind of had a hole made in it so you could put it on her head. She wouldn't do that because right. it would mess up her hair. Yeah, so, you change, know, she changed. Yeah. And, it's, and, and I think then it became a bit of a thing because Jason Donovan came on, and we wanted him to get into a, a, a dog suit. Um, <laughs> because Nigel Kennedy was on playing the violin and we wanted him to play hound dog and Jason Donovan to be in a hound dog. I don't quite know what I love. Why, I love the way that when you set this up, you it, go, because, like there's going to be some logical <laughs> no. explanation. Well, I thought there was a because, and then as I started speaking, I realised there was no because. Nigel Kennedy there's never obviously because. wanted to play hound no. dog, his most uh, famous... <laughs> His most but, famous hits. But the thing was, Jason wouldn't put the whole suit on. Yeah. He wouldn't put it over his, his head. Because, again, he had lovely hair. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he didn't want to mess up his hair. Yeah. Was, and he'd got that... Kylie had said, if you do something with Trevor Simon, it's OK, but don't do anything that messes up your hair. So he didn't. So he kind of wore the suit kind of half on, half off. Yeah. And it was, it was a bit disappointing. It's yeah, really it's disappointing. Yeah. It's most, that's my most disappointed memory. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. And did you all go, it was very rock and roll, did you go out partying with the oh, rock stars after, yeah, after yeah, the no. shows? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, it's really, this is what, I mean, I, I'm ashamed to admit this, but we were really, um, really delighted to be asked by the Lightning Seeds to introduce them on stage at the Shepherd's yeah. Bush Empire. And um, because uh, Ian Brody... It was Brody a Friday was, night, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a Friday night, so we knew we had the show the next okay. morning. But yeah, so, uh, and... Um, Ian Brody from the Lightning Seeds was mates with Terry Hall from the Specials, and yeah. I was a massive Specials fan. And Terry Hall was backstage, and I got to meet him, and it was just so exciting. And we went on stage, packed Shepherd's Bush Empire, introduced the Lightning Seeds. It was really great. And, um, and, and then we didn't even stay for the after show drink <laughs> because we had oh, got to get up early oh, for the show. Oh, we've got work uh, in the morning. <laughs> so that's how rock and roll we were. It was Aww. a great opportunity. We've had a great party, and we, we just went off to work. No. So, I like yeah. Ter Terry Hall's one of my one of the few pop stars I really love. He's, I met him, but he's quite small, isn't he? Oh, I, I, well, I don't. He remember. was sat down. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to get him on here. I should get Terry Hall on. I thought he was really tall. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's kind think... of middling. <laughs> I think, I think it's he, because I tend to shorten names, so Terry Hall tall, and, yeah. then, and it just stays. I head. think Terry Hall has a thing where he, whatever the height of the person he's talking to, he adapts. He's <laughs> 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 got a sort of telescopic thing going was. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
I remember him being about three foot tall. <laughs> Maybe it was David Rappaport I met. I don't know. Maybe it was someone else. <laughs> you know, I don't remember much. And you're in a band as well. You're in a, you're in a band as well. Yeah, you're in a band. In a band. You played yeah. the Maracas in the band. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, that and was great. No, we, yeah, because uh, well, I was in a pub. You're in two bands. Yeah, well, I, no, not now, but no. I, I was at one point, and I was in a band called Sucker, who were like a kind of pop punk band. Right. And uh, and we were great. It was it was really good fun. And um, we ended up on the John Peel stage in Glastonbury. Yeah. It was at ten thirty on a Sunday morning, <laughs> but we were we were there, and uh, and Simon came on as well and um, did Maracas. I just I just got to Glastonbury for. for for free, claiming I was their manager. Right. <laughs> Mind <laughs> you, I hated Glastonbury. Yeah. I would. I. I just. It was just too muddy and wet, and I didn't have the. You know, my suit got ruined. Yeah. <laughs> you danced in in trainers covered in carrier bags. Didn't I had you? to have carrier oh, bags on my feet because I just didn't yeah. have the gear. I'm just. Yeah. yeah. I'm not. You got to you know. get have the gear, but I. I didn't. I've been a couple of times. When it's sunny, it's very nice. Yeah. And you, if you're on magic mushrooms, it's great. <laughs> but when it's rainy, it's terrible. It's great on just mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Some nice garlic mushrooms. <laughs> they're, better, they're nicer. You don't see. I saw. I, I, don't, I never take drugs, but I did have magic mushrooms at uh, one of my Glastonbury's, and I saw like I thought the devil was masturbating with a piece of liver. And yeah, that's the kind of that's the kind of experience you can't have in the real realm. <laughs> But, but if you'd been to the cabaret tent, it maybe yeah. it was going on. It know? was just a man stroking his girlfriend's arm. Right. <laughs> Did she have a liver arm? No, she was not, an arm was normal. Oh, okay. When I, you know, you can <laughs> switch between the two. I, I lay down. I don't really take drugs, so it was very exciting. I lay down and looked at the sky, and then I, felt, I really felt like the sky was the sea, and I was like thousands of feet above the sea. That was good. That, that was better than the devil masturbating. That was a bit, <laughs> that was a bit scary. Why has he got some liver? I mean, fuck, what was that liver before? Does he, has he wanked a kind of cow down to his, until there's only the liver left? Wow. <laughs> you know. And you've got... Is there anything else you want to tell us about? <laughs> no, no, I tell you all about my drug experiences. That's oh. pretty much it. <laughs> I wish I'd come and seen you when I was on a magic mushroom. So <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> My God, you'd have loved it when we did our show. The devil wanks off with a piece of liver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we did. God, no, we did. Well, we did. We no, didn't I'm, quite. No, we what? did. We did a show called The Circus of Evil. Um, uh, yeah. And where we resurrected the most we, kind of notorious people from the past. Yeah. And Trev brought up. Trev did this uh, black magic ceremony with a. Box we did, we, yeah, we chocolates. used to um, perform rituals because I think it, originally, like, satanic rituals were performed with a thing called the Necromicon, which is like yeah. a kind of evil Bible. But okay. we, we did it by reading from the next directory. So we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind we, of like a we, shopping book from last century. <laughs> yeah. So I'd read from the next directory and I'd get random people from the audience to, to pick a page and I'd read out something about a, you know, a nylon sweater or something and I'd be reading out <laughs> medium, extra large, whatever. And, uh, and Simon came. Came on as Rasputin. Uh, and well, we, had, we had a fantastic... This was when we'd given up on the idea of things you can only buy in shops, with the exception of one prop. Uh, but we did... We made props, and I had... So I came on as Rasputin, where I had a pair of glasses with ping-pong ball eyes on, <laughs> and a, big, a big cape, and the cape came down, and we had a big hula hoop thing, a big hoop, so the, the cape was circular, and I had fake arms dangling down, and inside this, I was on a micro-scooter, so I could scoot around the <laughs> stage. <laughs> And, and the whole thing about Rasputin and his whole kind of theory was that God forgives sinners. Yeah. So the more you sin, the more you're worthy of forgiveness, which explains Rasputin's behavior. And as he did this, and we had to send off, uh, our poor um, stage manager had to go to a shop. So we did buy props from shops still. Yeah. And we sent her into Soho and she just had to buy the most realistic prosthetic penis she could find and we just had this kind of poking out as I was yeah. scooting around on it, so. it wasn't that so realistic. it's not that far from your <laughs> not experience that far. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of Rasputin so it's exciting but sadly because of that we can never go back to Jersey <laughs> <laughs> because there were protests outside the theatre we yeah, had, yeah. Of the well, because we were doing satanic rituals. Oh, right, uh, they are. Yeah. Well, I mean, the irony is the people in Jersey have killed more kids than anyone else. Well, so yeah. That's why they don't, they don't like it when it, it just got too close to home. Just, hey, come on, don't take the piss out of this. This is, this is how we stay so rich. 
I don't think they have the internet in Jersey. It's fine. I was going to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been there for ages. They used to book me. They used to book me, and then the year that story came out, I did quite a lot of material about. It. Yeah, that might be it. <laughs> you got to sixty-eight in the charts in the hit parade together. Yeah, with with Donovan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, we were never going to do a comedy single, but our manager at the time, Pete Brown, he, he was he was he was brilliant because he was the one who got us off the telly and said, "Go out on the road and do." He, he had this vision of us doing like a kind of old kind of uh, musical variety show, which he, he did put together. It was fantastic because yeah. we did our show. And we had a juggler and there was a band and and there was a, um, a girl. Yeah, and group these were and, these all gave us chance to then go off and change into costumes to become different characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> To put wigs on <laughs> and do a catchphrase. But, um, but yeah, so he said, I think you should do a comedy single. And we said, well, uh, no, I don't think so. He said, yeah, yeah, do, do it. Because, you know, do the swing your pants and this. And uh, so, so we said, well, we went to see the record company. And they said, yeah, 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 do it. Um, and um, <laughs> why don't you, you know, we'll get a good dance beat going. Because it was the 90s, you know, and we'll get a good, good dance beat going. And um, you just do your catchphrases over the top. <laughs> And we said, no, we're not going to do that. If you no, let's get... do something completely non-commercial. <laughs> yeah. Let's do our if... best to make no money whatsoever. <laughs> if you can get Donovan, we'll do a record. And of course then, uh, Pete, our manager, said, oh, I know, his manager. Yeah, 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 we'll get Donovan. This was around so... the time that Harry Enfield did. Do you remember Harry Enfield did loads of money yeah, as a yeah, single? And it was just literally him, because I was going, loads of money or <laughs> yeah. whatever. And, you know, we should have done that. Yeah. Swing your pants. Yeah. You know, should have just done loads yeah. of money. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. We should. <laughs> well, yeah, we tried. Um, but, so Donovan came along, and then the rest is uh, not history, yeah. really. <laughs> we, he was uh, nuts. Can we say he was yeah, nuts? Yeah, you can. You can, I think, so you can say anything you like on my podcast. He, um, so Donovan came along, and he turned up to one of the radio shows. We were doing a, a, an interview, I think, on Radio 1 about it. And he turned up with his T-shirt and he painted himself on the front of it. <laughs> <laughs> shelter. <laughs> and he just like, really badly painted on the front, shelter. And he just kind of came along and he, out of the blue, went, yeah, I'm donating all of my uh, proceeds from this to shelter. <laughs> and we just and thought, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, is our on one chance to make a bit of money and you're giving all the money to shelter. <laughs> And so, like, we kind of, we, 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 we didn't know no what idea. to do. This was the day of the video, and he turned up with this sweatshirt with, yeah, and... Um, and you said to me, fuck if I'm giving anything to shelter. <laughs> <laughs> you promise you never, ever, ever, ever say that. <laughs> and, and, uh, but then what happened is we did the thing and we went, oh, God, we'll give some money to shelter as well. Um, not all of it. We'll give it some. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, way down the line, Donovan gave nothing to shelter. He gave nothing. We ended up giving to shelter. He gave nothing. <laughs> But we didn't want because we didn't want to do one of these charity records. It was say, like, hey, we're great, we're gonna do it for charity. We just said, look, if we're gonna do a crap comedy record, we'll do a crap comedy, we'll be honest about yeah, it. Yeah. And so, you and you have, you've never liked shelter. <laughs> <laughs> but I have loved crap comedy. And and so, you know, but but we didn't want that thing. It's not like a shelter video. So the, you know, the director had to keep doing all these close-ups to try and avoid his sweatshirt. It was great. It was... And then it just looked like helter. And everyone thought it was helter skelter, and yeah. then obviously you get all the kind of Knock on things from that. Oh, oh it, was it was a disaster. Yeah. Why did you bring that up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we went on the Philip Schofield radio show. I know. Tomorrow. I said it was a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> and Donovan came with us, and, and so you know, we just said, "Look, Donovan, we'll, the idea, the way that we'll, we'll make this work is, we'll just say we kidnapped you and forced you into doing this, and, <laughs> and you couldn't, you know, you couldn't." And so uh, Philip Schofield says, "So, Donovan, I hear." They kidnapped you and you were forced into doing this record. And he said, no, I'm doing it for the poor children who, <laughs> and who don't have televisions and can't enjoy Trevor and Simon. And it was like, oh, no, thank you. You know, thank and you. there are kids out there who did have television and can't enjoy Trevor and Simon. It's true. There were many. There were many. But they love dry cleaners. <laughs> Oh man, it's uh, it's 
it's very well worth watching again on YouTube. It's really, it's so inventive and so funny, all that stuff. And you've you've been working. It's what's lovely is, and you know, this is I'm meeting too many double acts who are still friends after thirty or forty years. But you're clearly still, <laughs> you're still very good friends. I mean, you've been friends all the way through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We live eighty miles apart. It helps. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think you can. I don't think you can do it if you're not mates. Can you? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Not successfully, <laughs> not for very long. <laughs> Cannon and Ball, where, I mean, go, going back to the thing we were saying earlier about how we were fascinated by double acts who didn't get along, I loved it that for a, a period of time, Cannon and Ball toured together and refused to stay in the same hotel. So yeah. they'd only ever meet on stage. Yeah. And that's... Well, but that's a lot. There's a lot of double acts that are like, I think Little and Large have probably fallen out now, haven't they? And, uh, right. No. But like a lot of, are they still are they friends? Are they? Well, I don't know, but you're just saying probably have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sticking up for the fact think, that they maybe I haven't. I think they did. I think they've fallen out. But like, I think Abbott and Costello, like lots oh, of Oh, God, yeah. They've you know, died. They're, they're dead now. Are they dead? Yeah, yeah they're fine. <laughs> <think. laughs> well, they, they can come back as ghosts <laughs> if you watch their films. They were the, they were the original yeah. ones who did the 70 30 split. You know, they, they, right. they didn't get you. So, yeah. So I have, to, I have to imagine in my head one of them going, Abbott, to remember which is which. <laughs> yeah. So Abbott is the tall one. <laughs> okay. He was the guy who got the raw deal. Yeah. So uh, He wasn't Costello as funny as the other one, though, is he? Yeah. You're both equally funny. That is the thing. <laughs> 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 That's great. Because you're literally doing exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> but we did exactly the same thing and have done exactly for 25 to 30 years. <laughs> it's so it's such it's so funny. And you've been writing lots of scripts together. You write for kids TV still. You wrote. Uh, or yeah. you're not, yeah. <laughs> no, we, we, yeah. We, yes, I know. I mean, I'm doing less writing. Trev's doing more writing. I also work, I, I, I have a job job. So yeah. I kind of am working. I work at Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. Oh, do you? That's yeah. where my children were born. Ah, yeah. okay. Well, one good, one, uh, not the kids. The, both kids are okay. <laughs> one, one birth experience very good. One birth experience pretty bad. Oh. Are you anything to do with the... Uh, Birth children. <laughs> He's not a midwife. No, no, but I mean, not. I kind of. So, was your most recent child born there? Yeah. So you were most probably aware. Was that the good birth or the bad birth? That was the. Well, it was the more. It was um, very hectic in the okay. in the department of, on that night. Also. Okay. Were you aware? This is the wrong question to ask. When you're talking about a hectic birth of a child, <laughs> yeah. were you aware in the in the hospital of Medi Cinema? Of what? Of Medi Cinema. Of there being a cinema in the hospital. I, I wasn't. Is that what you do? That's what I do. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I work for a charity that runs a cinema in a hospital. Oh, lovely. That's yeah. good. And for the paediatric wards, we have kind of, you know, we, like we're showing Coco at the moment yeah. and Early Man and whatever. So, yeah. not, well, I can't blame it's you a, for the birth of my son. And that's quite a good charity, <laughs> unlike Shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a rubbish nice to charity. help the kids. <laughs> You know they film sliding doors in the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital. Hmm? You know the lifts and the, that's the oh, lift scene. Oh shit! In, it's sliding we, had, doors. we had a screen <laughs> today, so I've come from work today. We have on, on Monday afternoons we have a silver screen yeah. and we had fifty percent lifts working. They're yeah. always They're really always broken. Doing, yeah, yeah. But we they, had a screening today. It was really hard work. I'm sorry, I, but I have to go around all the wards seeing who, which patients can come to the screening, and today. It was aimed, it's called a silver screening. It's aimed at patients with dementia and it's aimed at the older patients. I'm going around wards where patients in the 80s or 90s and saying, do you want to come and see Journey's End? <laughs> <laughs> it was hard work today, it was a hard sell. Oh my goodness! Uh, we, you know we have to uh, uh, leave it. At that. And I think that's a good point to go. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we reached the journey's end. <laughs> Let's get for Trevor and Simon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back after the break with uh, the equally ridiculous Jess Phillips. Um. 
How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>